Hi, this is Paul and Crystal uh, from Eastern Therapeutic. Uh, Crystal got uh, a request from one of her members on Ko-Fi at the energy level um, asking, what well, you tell them. They wanted, um, it's an exclusive content request. So they actually, five months ago, they had broken their ankle and they had a surgery on this ankle and even after five months have passed, they're still having a lot of stiffness and like the tendons and ligaments and pain. And they're wondering, what can I do for that? Right. Thank you. So a number of things are going on there. Um, he's probably got some scar tissue and that's pretty easy to do. And it's pretty gentle as well. So we'll start with that. Um, he's probably got some tightness in there. So then we'll move on to techniques for removing tightness. Um, he's probably got some fascial tightness, so that'll be something else we'll move on to. So there's three things we got there. All right, so scar tissue. Easy enough to see, you look to see where you were cut. So this goes out to anybody listening who may have had surgery. Um, this, this should apply to all of you. So you look to see where you're cut and that's where you're gonna place your fingers, the, the pads of your fingers. All right, so let's say I had cut here. Right, so a line there. So what I do is I place my fingers there and I do circles on it. Now the technique is called circular friction, which will imply I'm rubbing the surface. But for this, I tend to more grab the surface. So I'm just rubbing it, making the surface move in circles. And then I'll just work the entire length of the line. And I take my time. It's not something that you rush. And you do this until the feeling is it melts. So it just gets softer. Now, what you do next is you do the same thing again, but you push a little bit harder and do the same thing again. So let me show with the hands. Let's say you've got layers of tissue and there's my big finger coming down on top, topmost layer. And I'm making this move this way relative to the one below. So this is going like this. And so it will break up any adhesions and the stuckness in there. So now the top layer slides over the one below, which is the way it should. Then when I push a little bit harder, I'm pushing these two layers together. So now I'm moving two at the same time over the third layer. So the only difference, a little bit harder, same technique, move it. And then when it's all melted, soft, you push a little bit harder and do it again. So now you've got three layers and you keep on going. So it's the same thing. Um, the ends tend to need more work. So you spend a little bit more time at the ends. Do these circles all the way down the length of the surgical cut. So if you've had arthroscopic surgery, just, it's, it'll just be one site, well, you know, be four sites or whatever, around the near, whatever. But you, you just stay over that site and, and work that site. And yes, it's gonna go deeper through the different muscle layers. So in the ankle, there's not a lot of tissue there, so it shouldn't take too long. So you just do circles the entire length and you go a bit deeper, repeat it again. So this works for cesarean uh, surgeries. Um, one session, you can make it look a lot smoother. Two sessions, certainly. Um, you can just smooth it out and then everything can slip and slide without catching or tugging. So you've done all these circles. Then the next thing is you just grab the tissue and pull gently. And what that will do is with the different layers, if you miss something, maybe there's one little attachment still in there. What you're doing is just pulling it apart. So a gentle pull will pull all those little isolated things that you missed, separated so now we can slip and slide. And, that. and so that should help with um, scar tissue. So it's a nice gentle technique. You're not breaking anything up. All you're doing is getting rid of adhesions and everything will slip and slide the way it should do. Now we come on to the muscles and then the tendons in the area. I like to do a stretch uh, beforehand because if there's any cramping, it just kind of gets rid of the cramping. How can you do it with the ankle? Well, you pretty much you grab the foot and just kind of pull it apart. 
you, know, you can put your foot in different positions, but that, that will tend to get rid of any cramping. You can grab the muscle and just pull it and stuff like that. So that's, that's just a start. What you do afterwards, it doesn't hurt as much if you just do a stretch. Muscles around the ankle, you don't have much. You have some muscles in the foot, but the muscles are pretty much up here. This part of the body, you have 13 muscles, two of which are high up here, so they don't really count. It's just their tendon goes all the way through you. So you've got 11 muscles. And some of them are so deep, but it doesn't matter because what you're going to be working on, you're going to be pressing on it and that will go all the way through to the depth. So the, the different areas, you've, you've got the shin bone here, tibia, you've got a meat here, so there's three muscles in that area here. Then over on the side here, you've got the uh, fibula, the head of the fibula down there. You've got a couple of muscles down the side here involved in twisting of the foot, but the bulk is really at the back here. You're just going to do pretty much generic techniques. Keep everything warm because if it's cold, it tightens up. So warm hands. You could put some heat on before you even touch it. Just general kneading, pushing, you know, back of the hand, rhythmic compression. That's a nice technique to use. We don't do it against the bone, um, but so in this area here, these muscles over here are involved in twisting the foot and lifting it up. The ones at the back are pushing down, which is where we need the meat for pushing off to take a step. So, you know, if you've had surgery here, you probably haven't been using the ankle for a while. They, they may be a little bit cranky tight. So you just get in here, just generally needing. Shaking is another one. You can easily do that here. Um, I don't do rolling, which is kind of grab it and push it and stuff like that. Um, so just a little bit of circular stuff. Just whatever feels good for this. Uh, and then on this side, because there's not really a lot of muscle in there, you can use something thought you could use your fingers, but just get in there, rubbing it from side to side. Two directions you should aim for. One is side to side, and the other one is along the length of it. How would you know? Pretty much in the leg, they're all long muscles. So you, they go that way. There's nothing really diagonal in the leg. It's just straight up and down. Um, so side to side would be across this way. Down would be that way. So going downwards, um, the technique is called stripping. The biggest issue with that is aim towards the attachment, or in this case, it'll be the ankle, because you don't want to be pulling on it. So, plus, it's really difficult to massage up the leg. Right? Yeah, I really have to, yeah, I could do it like so. Right? But by doing that, um, I may be pulling on this area. Um, we're not quite sure what's exactly going on there, so it's better to push this way to wherever the surgery was or the injury you know, so that you're not yanking on it and that will stretch out those muscles. So just run down there. If this has been going on for a long time, what will happen then? The muscles will get tight and they'll get stuck to each other. So all of this nice massaging stuff won't get, get, it won't do it all for you. There'll still be some aching in there. So there, there's some things you can do to help out that. And I'll bring some of Crystal's tools over here. One direction I can't go as a massage therapist is outwards. I can't grab something and pull out, but I can with a suction cup and they come in all sorts of varieties. Here. This one's particularly neat because it really compresses down. So you get a real, and then you place it on there and you pop it up. And what that's doing is pulling the muscles in a way a massage therapist can't get at. And the point of that is if it's all stuck, instead of me trying to go diagonal and try and separate them all out, now it's pulling them apart in a very gentle way. 
So it's not ripping and tearing, it's just pulling it apart. You could put lotion on here and you could slide this down. So, so you rub the area, um, put this cup on there, and now you can slide. There we are. I got other cups that slide a little bit easier and I should put more lotion on, but anyway, that's the point. Now you're kind of rolling the muscle. So you can do stuff like that. So that, that's another tool that's really useful um, because anything that's stuck, you now have another direction to go in. Right, so you just, plus you can also just leave it on and it's pulling, it's, it's doing the work. You can move your leg while doing that, that also helps, that moves the tissues underneath it. This sort of device, uh, it's a nice, gentle way of doing it. You, you want something with a rounded edge and, and this, you can do stripping. What you do, you come down here and you push down and you can go hard and what that will do, all that tight stuff now gets pushed and squeezed apart and opened up. It's painful, at least when I had it done because I have this IT band here that's tight and the chiropractor had a metal rod and he was pushing really hard there and I was gripping the table. It's like, oh, really bad. So you don't have to do it that hard, but this sort of thing gives you the option of just doing the same thing. So I would use this for something that has been stuck for months. You haven't been using the muscles at all. So in this case, I don't know if, if, if the member had been immobilized before having the surgery or had been immobilized afterwards, just in case, I don't know. Uh, but for any of you out there, if you've had an immobilized area, then you may have to go this level of sliding down there, widening the muscles and breaking up all these little adhesions. You have to do it somewhat gently because otherwise you're just ripping and tearing and then the whole body's just gonna stick it all together in some vast mess of stuckness. So you don't do it too hard, but that's another tool. One thing that Crystal has suggested I use and I haven't used it, I did mention it, warm up the area first. Well, you can do better. Right. Um, so these things, infrared heaters, they've been around for a while. This one came from a Goodwill store. You, you plug it in and you just, warm up the areas and that gets the heat way down there. Um, double benefit, it will numb any pain that you're having, having any nerve irritation, stuff like that. So that's a nice tool. And then there's the ha 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 ha. I'm not that good at making that sound. But the mechanical vibrator, great tool. So yeah. Um, I don't have this plugged in, but basically you just pound the area sliding up and down. So I use this when the area is so extensive, usually in the thighs, sometimes the butt, where it's like, it's gonna take a lot of time and maybe there's a lot of effort needed, knock it out with this. So yeah, you can do something like this down on the, the muscle parts here, because doing it right against the bone won't work. So a smaller one down the outside there would be very nice. It just shakes it all up. There's another thing that can be used and that enters into the next level which is to do with a fascial level. It still works at the muscle level but if you have a belt or a strap, so in this case the ankle, now you've got something and you can just pull on it. Le better to lean back rather than just straight pulling and that will stretch the opposite part of the body back here. So, and you can get it in different positions, whatever, twist your foot and do it. You can do that. So there are different types of bands, but as a massage therapist, I have this tool. I'm just showing you that. So most people have belts. Yeah, you can figure something out. There are also TheraBands and I'll show you some because they are quite useful and you may find some use here. And Crystal's got two types. Here and here, therabands. Green, this was a bit stronger. This one's a bit softer, um, but they have some uses here. You could do the same sort of thing. 
All right, so that's so we've done scar tissue, we've done muscles, um, tendons. You can do the same sort of technique as I've talked about with muscles. They won't respond as much, but they'll still appreciate, you know, the, the little bit of working in it, a little bit firmer, um, so they don't respond. So now the next one is fascial stuff. So everything, every body body part is wrapped in fascia, connective tissue. It holds us together. Um, over time that can go tight. And what that means is it's squeezing every blood vessel, every nerve, every muscle, every tissue is getting squeezed. And when you have this sort of stuff, it's a pain that won't go away. Pills won't do it because what's happening there, the tissue is starving for oxygen, for nutrients. And no amount of medication is going to knock that out. It's the body sent, you know, loosen me up here. So how would you loosen the fascia here? The way I choose, which may be too much for somebody that's had surgery and we're not quite sure what's going on and I don't know whoever else is listening, um, but I stand on the edge of the stairs. So I'll tell you what I do. I, so the step is here, right there. So all of this is just hanging in there and I let my body weight push it down. And what that does, it causes the ankle to bend there and stretches these out. I do it with bent knees and straight knees because then the, the two different muscles in here respond differently to that. And you can turn your foot sideways on to catch the more outside or the inside. So that's quite strong. And in this case, we'd start off with something um, gentler. So let's go back to this belt idea. The way fascia works, its job is to protect us from sudden changes. So if we introduce any sudden change or overwhelming force, it's going to protect us. It's not going to let it happen. But in this case, we want something to happen. We want it to let go. And the way you do that is, in this case, just lean back, gently challenge it and wait. And I'm talking 45 seconds minimum. You just wait. So get comfortable and yeah, see if you could prop your foot up even so you don't even have to do this. But you just wait and then I could start to feel it because I'm not particularly tight. I'm feeling my foot going backwards as the connective tissue is saying, this is okay, I'll let you move a little bit. And I just maintain the same challenge, same force. If nothing happens, it's a clue that you're trying too hard. So just ease up on that. And then with 10 seconds, you'll be back to everything slowly moving. And what will happen, the connective tissue will just soften so that every vessel now has more room. Nerves are not being crushed, squeezed, irritated, annoyed, and sending pain messages. And every muscle is getting more blood, which means it's healing faster. And it's getting rid of waste nutrients. So it's a less toxic environment. Everybody's happy here. Yeah. But dr drink a little bit more water when you do something like this, because you've had you know, more waste products suddenly go into the body. All right, and this is it. This is how you do a fascial stretch. You challenge it and you wait. And after a while, it will move slowly, gently, and you just continue that until you get the feeling, okay, I've done enough, we're all good. You may notice afterwards that it's warmer and it's easier to move, like all of it is easier to move. Another consideration is if you think tightness is on one side, Chances are it's on both sides, certainly for in this case here, because neither side is moving. You're not pushing your foot down, you're not pushing it up. Both sides can get tight. So both sides are pulling back on that joint, compressing it. So don't work one side of the body. Don't do massages on one side. So you saw me massaging this here, the back. You have to work the front as well because if you don't, what will happen? That's still going to be tight and its job is to lift the foot up. So the foot will be kept up artificially tight 
you know, and then you'll be stepping incorrectly and slamming down with your heel and it's just, it's just a mess waiting to happen. If you ever get a massage and you're asking for something, oh, I got this ache, this that, well, make sure that the therapist does some work on the opposite side. Because sometimes the tightness is a response to something else. So you maybe get aching here, but the problem is tightness on the opposite side. So it's always good to work both sides of the limb. Yeah, if I had this client come to me, yeah, I'd be thinking, is it normal, the amount of healing time? If it wasn't, then I'd be talking about nutrition, sleeping position, anything else going on with it, um, nerves. So then I'd be looking at the sciatic nerve routine because, you know, feeds the leg, stuff like that. Um, so if you get a massage, and it was quite nice, but it doesn't do the job. You get another massage, nice, but doesn't do the job. Then maybe you should be looking for something a little bit more. Uh, in which case, give Crystal a, a call or a text and say, hey, I'm trying this, it's not working. Can you come up with some more ideas? Um, we'd be glad to help. Thank you.